Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some information that I've learned over the years about batteries. My batteries usually last about three to five years. And what I've noticed, if I buy the batteries with the caps and I can maintain them myself, I can get five years out of the battery. And if I buy the maintenance free batteries, the ones with no caps, I usually get three to four years out of those batteries. So in today's video, I'm going to share some tips how to get the maximum amount of life out of your battery. Tip number one, wear gloves and always use safety glasses. So I've seen these batteries explode and when they do explode, acid goes everywhere. You don't want to be around when these things explode and they can explode for all sorts of different reasons. But the main one is whenever you put a charger on here. So make sure you're wearing safety glasses and gloves. Tip number two, if you're replacing the battery and the battery has caps, go ahead and remove those caps and check the acid level before you install it in the car. On this one, it's a brand new battery and I found the acid level is low. I'll go ahead and adjust the level with some distilled water on this one and I'll also adjust the level on the other ones. This brings me to tip number three. Every six months, you'll want to pull those caps off and check the acid level. If the acid level is low, you'll want to adjust it with some distilled water. The level's adjusted correctly when you can see a quarter inch of liquid above those plates. Make sure your battery is clean before you put it in the car. If your battery has acid or corrosion on it, use water and baking soda. Baking soda is a good neutralizer for the acid. Just be careful not to get any baking soda inside the caps. Tip number four, it's best to charge the battery if the cables are removed and the caps are off. So now would be a good time to charge it. Also, it's best to charge it at a slower charge rather than a fast charge. Tip number five, make sure the battery tray is clean. Also, the plastic cover does have a purpose. This keeps the heat away from the battery. I see a lot of cars out there missing the plastic cover simply because the technician didn't want to take the extra two minutes to put it on. Make sure this battery cover goes back on. Also, the battery hold down doesn't need to be real tight. It just needs to be tight enough to hold the battery from moving around. So before we hook up the battery, you need to know which one is positive and which one is negative. So on the battery, the plus means positive and the minus means negative. Now the negative wire will always be grounded to the body and the engine somewhere and the positive will be coming into the fuse box here. But we always hook up the positive first and then the negative. If we were removing the battery, the negative would come off first and then the positive. Let's get these tightened up. There's one more thing that should be done anytime you replace the battery. You should check for an excessive current draw. All vehicles will have a small draw whenever the car is completely shut down. This is necessary to keep the memory alive for your radio, seats, mirrors, and many other components. If the draw is over 50 milliamps, it can drain your battery, causing your car not to start. I have a video on testing for a parasitic draw. I'll put a link to that in the description, but here's a quick demonstration on how to check for a parasitic draw. All right, so to do a parasitic draw test, I've got my meter here and we want to put it on the amp scale. So let's go ahead and turn it on and put it on the amp scale. Our leads, the black leads, going to go in common. And then our red lead is going to go in the amp mode. And then here's our leads right here. So we already have the battery cable off because I never connected it yet. And then here's a jumper wire. This is just a jumper wire. We're going to take one end of the jumper wire 
put it on the negative side of the post and the other end on the terminal. Okay, and then we're going to take our leads and we're going to put one lead on this end and this lead on this end. And then if we look here, I have 126 milliamps. And then all I need to do is disconnect this jumper wire. And then the current is going to flow through the meter and read my milliamps. And I want to see under 50 milliamps. If I see above 50 milliamps, then I have too much current draw and that's going to drain my battery overnight. So let's just make sure that's not going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and remove this. And there it is. So right now I have 670 milliamps and that's way too much. But the computer's going to shut everything down. It already did. Now it's at 400. And then once it shuts everything down, it shouldn't be over 50. So let's give it a minute and let's see where it ends up. There we go. So right now we're at 16. Let me get this closer so you can see it. So I have 16 milliamps and that's perfect. So I know I don't have a draw on my battery. So I can go ahead and hook this up and be done with my battery job. There's also a memory saver that plugs into your OBD2 connector. This will keep all your presets alive when you disconnect your battery. These are available on Amazon. One last thing, if your radio has a theft prevention code, make sure you have that code before disconnecting that battery. Otherwise, you'll be contacting the dealer to unlock your radio, and that could get expensive. I know today's video was kind of a simple video, and I wasn't even gonna do another battery video because I already have one or two on my YouTube page, but when I brought home that brand new battery, and saw that one of the cells had a really low acid level that probably would have failed in one year. I really wanted to help out my viewers so this wouldn't happen to them. That's what we're all about on this channel. We're all about helping each other out, trying to save each other money. On that note, if you could give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And then here's a jumper wire. This is just a jumper wire. And we're gonna take